Hello everybody, my name is X Factor, and today we're breaking down some of the changes that are coming to Battlefield 1 compared to previous titles. And remember, all this is a work in progress. There's some things that I'm going to talk about that may or may not be changing based on some of the feedback that the developers have gathered through various events, including this one, the Battlefield 1 livestream event and reveal. The first thing on the list is there is drag in Battlefield 1. We're used to lead and we're used to drop. But the developers have increased the initial muzzle velocity of all the weapons, but it becomes slower over time. The next thing, and more than likely might be tweaked, is gun mechanics have been changed. Battlefield used to be about standing, shooting, tap firing, burst firing, various weapons at various ranges. But believe it or not, certain weapons in Battlefield 1 are more accurate the longer you hold the trigger down. Not all of them, but some of them. Next up, let's talk about the Recon class, also known as the Sniper. There's a couple weapons available in the livestream gameplay, but all of them have a sweet spot based on distance to when they can actually one-shot to the body. Just because you're point-blank and hit somebody in the chest does not mean you're going to drop them. Maybe it's 20 meters out. Maybe it's a little bit further than that. So there are some very, very unique bolt-action sniper rifles in Battlefield 1, so you have to be very careful which one you choose, whether it's short, medium, or long range where you're looking to inflict the most damage. There's a lot of armor in Battlefield 1, but don't worry. Every single class will have the ability to take down said armor with different gadgets. And of course, some things that are already in the game, including the assault class with the deployable rocket, and believe it or not, the recon. You could equip your gadget, the K-Round and it does massive damage to light tanks. You could do 50 plus damage if you hit something like a light tank in the tracks and some of the heavy tanks, you can actually do 15 to 20 or so damage. So you're not absolutely helpless as a recon. But remember, there is more stuff coming into the game such as potentially dynamite or TNT. One of the next major changes has to do with the mini-map in Battlefield 1. Previous Battlefield titles, if you were to shoot without a suppressor, it placed you on the mini-map. Or if you were spotted actively or passively, it placed you on the map. Along with any gadget such as a tugs, motion sensor ball would put you there. But in Battlefield 1, that's been toned way down. Now the only things that are going to place you on the mini-map, it's not shooting anymore. It's active spots or the recon's flare gun. When he shoots it off into an area, it places everybody on the mini-map, including the gadgets. So whether it's a tripwire, anti-tank mine, or anything else that might be deployed, you're actually going to see that as a 3D spot and also on the mini-map. Something that's been brought back to the Battlefield franchise for Battlefield 1 is the headshot tank of the helmet. And with added flare, if the killing blow is from a headshot, their helmet is going to go flying off in the distance. So you can hear when you get the headshot, you can see when you get the headshot, then of course you can see the helmet fly off in the distance. Small arms fire can also mess up some of the biplanes and bombers, but don't worry about shooting the pilot out. Aim for the wings. You can get points for doing the damage based on the wings, and you can actually yank them out of the sky. So if you chew up one of their wings, it could just simply yank on their plane. If they're low enough, they might simply crash. I was able to do this several times. Number one, it's hilarious. Number two, it is very, very effective. Which leads into the next point of dynamic damage when it comes to the planes. If your left wing starts taking quite a bit of damage, it's going to fly drastically different. How about the right wing? Same thing. How about both wings? Each experience is going to be unique based on the damage you've taken at the time. If you're into playing with tanks, there's several new mechanics. More than likely, if you have one of the larger tanks, you're going to become more powerful if you have two or three gunners because you're increasing your damage. Don't want to get out and repair? Well, you don't have to. There's actually an auto repair mechanic already in place in Battlefield 1. You simply hold X, and it is a timer-based thing. You're going to see the scroll wheel go around. It takes six to eight seconds, and based on what vehicle you're in, it's going to repair you in chunks. But it can be interrupted. Any sort of anti-tank equipment hits you, whether it's the rocket or the grenade, it's actually going to stop that progress. Meanwhile, you can't do anything else in the tank. You can't move. You can't shoot. So you're really a sitting dunk, and it kind of brings back of going back to deployment and getting refueled or fixed up in previous Battlefield titles. 
for those of you that have been playing Battlefield for a long time, Conquest has been one of the primary game modes for as long as the game goes back. And they've changed the way flag caps work. Yes, you can still win the burn as long as you have one more person than the enemy team, but they've drastically slowed down the burn rates. That means these flags are going to be contested for much longer, and it felt like the actual fighting really gravitated towards those flags because of that change, and then another one having to do with cap points. Now, when you cap a flag, you get 500 points plus 25 or more per tick, not to mention all the increase you get while killing players while defending or attacking said cap points. You're only going to get 20 for a kill now, but you get more for damaging, more for capping and killing while doing so and defending while capping. And lastly, vehicle entry animations. It takes you a couple seconds to get it in a vehicle, which is great. You can actually be shot out while doing so. So there's some fun little facts you might not have known about Battlefield 1. And again, any of this can change at any point in time based on the feedback that the developers have been given and they're seeing from the community. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you guys soon.